Thunder star, my MVP choice, Russell Westbrook, <laughs> will return to the lineup tonight when the Thunder face the Sixers. Uh, Westbrook had surgery Saturday to repair a fracture in his right cheek after his teammate accidentally kneed him in the face. Um, so let's talk about Russell Westbrook moving forward. I'm glad he's back. Yeah. Again, my MVP choice, Scoop. I'm with you. Really? Oh, yeah. All day. All right. So Should be in the conversation. Yeah. He def well, he's definitely in the conversation. Should be. But I, I'm, I have him at a two. Tell me what's mm -hmm. going to happen or what do you expect from Westbrook moving forward? Well, you know, um, I, I, I think no player could have been hurt at the wrong time. What he was doing before he got injured was kind of special. I think he had a month of February that was almost equivalent to what Kevin Durant had in January last year where he solidified in my mind. You know, I don't want to be a prisoner of the moment, but I, he solidified in my mind, okay, this guy has and should be the MVP. You know, um, but to have three triple doubles in a row and then get taken out of that rhythm, I think it's going to hurt him a little bit. And Yeah, I, I, I don't, I mean, he's playing the Sixers, so he could get it. Hell, one of us could get a triple double against the Sixers <laughs> tonight. But I think just that pacing is going to come off, and now you're going to have the James Hardens and the Steph Currys and the LeBrons playing well. And I think just that break may affect Russell, and playing with the mask may affect him too. But moving forward, I think he's going to do what he has to do, hold it down until KD gets back, and then go for that final, final push. And like we were saying earlier over there, get in that eighth or seventh seed, and then be one of the best seventh to eighth seeds we've ever seen in NBA history because they're all healthy. Which is the question mark. We do not know when KD is returning. He right, that's the problem. This week. It could right. be one or two more weeks. Kate, what do you expect from Westbrook moving forward? Well, he's definitely going to look as fierce as his game is now, right, with that mask on. I mean, it, the way he plays and the way he was playing, it was so fun to watch. And certainly yeah. as a fan, I was disappointed that he had to miss some games. But I don't think he's actually going to break stride just because of the nature of the injury. I think he's going to pick right back up where he left off against the Sixers. But I'm more interested in right whether the Oklahoma City Thunder can continue gaining momentum as they before they get KD back and as they're heading into the playoffs. You know, the question had been even last week, like, is this a lost season for them, right, after this injury to Russell Westbrook? Now we see hey, he's coming back. It's, prob it's not going to be a very significant injury. They were 9-3 and three in the month of February. Best record in the Western Conference. So can Russell Westbrook put this team on his shoulders again for the next few weeks, keep everything moving forward before they can get KD back? You know, can they build that momentum still? Because I think that's a key part of it for them. Yeah, is being yeah. able to get Russell back, build some continuity with the roster, and they made some trades. And then get KD back, and they got to keep. They can't just have these guys coming in in the last week and expect to do something in the playoffs. I know they look good on paper and they're playing well, but they got to get KD back. They got to get everybody on the same page before they head into the playoffs. Yeah, it's funny because I was thinking about this the other day. They've had so many stop, start, stop, yeah. start, right. stop, yeah. start, stop, right. start. Yes, that's very but yet they've always been able to keep going and no go what. forward. Other people have been able to step up. And I give a lot of credit to this organization. Sam Presley has done a great job, not just not standing still, but okay, what can we do to fortify Sweet. where we don't have to have to rely on these guys so much? Mm -hmm. We're going to need these guys. We know that we hope they're going to be healthy. So what does he do? He gets an Ennis Cantor where all of a sudden now, KD, you're going to be our perimeter guy. Russell West, we're going to make it easy for you. You have your foray into the lane. We got a big body that will attack the boards. We can throw the ball to him on the post. Hey, Serge Ibaka, now you can be that free safety and roam on the inside and protect the run alone in his can who can do the same thing. This has been, been so much of their normal. It's because, oh, Russell's out. When is he coming back? All right, fine. KD, he's out. When is he going to uh, evaluation? Fine. It's like whatever we need to do, whoever we put out there, you know, we're going to bring it. And then when we get into the playoffs, when everybody's healthy, you don't want to see us in the playoffs, whether right. we're a seventh or an eighth exactly. seed. So because of that whole stop-start thing that they've gotten so used to, it would bother another team. But we've seen this from the from the Oklahoma City Thunder the last two, three years because Westbrook and Kevin Durant have had to deal with injuries, and this team has had to try to manufacture themselves again. And they still got to the Western Conference Finals last year in a stop-start mode. That's why I have enough faith that they'll probably, if, it wouldn't surprise me if they continue and get the Western Conference. But then we're again. assuming, of course, that when the playoffs hit, there's no more stop oh, start. there's plenty of assumptions. <laughs> no, of course. Yeah. But I, like the way this season has been going for them, I'm not even sure you're going to see, like, throughout the playoffs, that they're not going to run into something else, that something else is not going to. Can I? I'm so, sorry. No, 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 no doesn't matter. Do, do you think, in the Russell Westbrook conversation, and you and I think he's the MVP, do you think he will personally try to go for that for the rest of the season? I know. I think he's trying to secure a playoff spot. Mm -hmm. okay. Right now, the Pelicans are a game back, and they're coming. So. Okay, so you don't think he's like personally going to like you know try to 
like, all right, I'm going to wield this thing. I'm going to get victories, but I still want to get this MVP. No, no I think he wants uh, yeah. to win. I think he wants to win and try to and, and get in the playoffs and just make sure that they're there. Because we've talked about how he's changed. He's mature. You're hearing yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. I mean, you, okay. he's more about being a team player now. It's not so much about what he's doing. I mean, that would be nice if, in yeah. fact, he could get that. Right. Okay. MVP. As a byproduct of right. how he's sure. playing, maybe he, he jumps to that top spot in the MVP race and it. I don't think so. He's not that, my guy. Yeah, but. No, but he knows there's a lot on the line. I, the other day when he had took too many shots, he was like, I took too many shots. I think he took 38 shots. He was like, I think I took too many well, shots, you think? I took 38. 38, 38 yeah. that. Yeah. What, but that, yeah. was, a turning, that was a turning point. That was a turning point. You had I'm never learning. heard him say that before. Yeah, the, the, the best yeah, thing about this, that conversation has ended once and for all that Kevin Durant would be better without Russell Westbrook. Yes, please. We can Thank finally you. put that in the ground, throw dirt on it, say, for the brothers who aren't here, and forget about it from now on. Because it, I don't want to hear that anymore. Until the playoffs start and he has one of those games, it's going to come back up. Either way, uh, we yeah. can still put that conversation to rest because mm -hmm. those two guys are better together. You can't separate those two and think that they're going to be better without each other. I think we can finally put that conversation to rest about, oh, they don't need Russell Westbrook. He's in Durant's way. That's the perfect guy you need for Kevin Durant. You know what? Before we go, we'll take a moment to honor the homie for those who aren't here. Uh, Kate Bacon. <laughs> <laughs> we really do appreciate you being here. It's been Thank a wonderful you. three days. Amen. You've enlightened us. Uh, we're really so has. grateful that ESPNW uh, allowed you to hang out with us. Yes. You yes. do a great Thank job. You. You're yes. welcome back anytime. Thank um, you. As for Scoop Jackson, thank you so much, my friend. Unfortunately, I'll be back tomorrow. It's great you'll be back tomorrow. Freddie Jackson. Freddie time. Jackson, Freddie Coleman. And Freddie Jackson will be back tomorrow. I feel like Jake Cullen doing John Fox now. Here, uh, he also has a special announcement on the show. Wow, we have a lot of folks coming here to make special announcements. Unfortunately, some of us won't be here, but we'll talk about that a little later on. What? Yeah. I'm not going to be here. Who is? I know. I know. What's... Disappointing. I know. According to Ed Warner, no. NFL rushing champion DeMarco <laughs> Murray would likely return to the Cowboys if the offer uh, is equal to another offer that another team might make him. With quality teams like the Colts, Cardinals, and perhaps the Seattle Seahawks potentially looking for a starting running back, Murray is expecting uh, a nice free agent market in terms of people pursuing him. Scoop. I love you. <laughs> I can yeah. really feel it. Really. I, I do. Uh, do you fuzzy. think that uh, DeMarco saying that he's open to returning to the Cowboys will help him or hurt him during free agency? Uh, I think his saying this right now is actually helping him because um, I, I think what he wants to do is secure his place with in the Cowboys and make them not feel that they have to go outside and look for somebody else. So let me start publicly negotiating right now, you know, to make it easy on you all. The, the one thing you don't want an organization to do is go looking for someone even when they don't feel that they have to and then find someone. Okay. You know, for DeMarco Murray's situation, like, look, we had a good thing going last year. I want to stay here. Let me make this easy on y'all so y'all can start paying attention to other things we need to look at to try to get a championship as opposed to try to find another running back. So. I'm good. I'll take less money. Whatever we're going to work out, I'll work out. So I think it's very smart for him to do this. So, you know, the Cowboys just don't go out there randomly looking and accidentally find somebody. Yeah, I, I was kind of torn between helping and hurting because I'm not against anybody getting more money because of this, especially the National Football League at that position where the shelf life, according to the perception, what we've seen, the shelf life of running backs gets smaller and smaller every year. Mm -hmm. But I decided to say he's going to help himself. But for this reason. I think he clearly understands what the market is not going to bear for him. Mm -hmm. And he's like, you know what? Even Let's say if I get more money from a team like Jacksonville or Oakland, but my best years are right now behind this offensive line. So why would I not want to play behind Travis Frederick and Tyron Smith and Zach Martin, the best offensive line last year in the National Football League? And whatever financial opportunities are going to be there for me off the field are going to be a lot better for me with the Dallas Cowboys, despite the kind of money that, I'm, that I could have gotten else, elsewhere and gotten more money elsewhere. So mm -hmm. I think he's completely helping himself from the standpoint of his career is going to be a lot better playing behind that offensive line with Tony Romo and Des Bryant and wide receiver and quarterback, quarterback and wide receiver respectively. And whatever finance he's going to get outside of the field, it's a lot better to do that winning with the Dallas Cowboys, potentially winning, than trying to do that, let's say, with Jacksonville, Arizona Cardinals or somebody else. I think he's helping. Yeah, I think this has always been about for him just seeing what the market might bear for him or being wanted, right? Mm -hmm. I think a lot of ways it's like taking these calls, seeing what other teams might pay him, but always in the back of his mind knowing that the Dallas Cowboys were absolutely the best place. So now this report comes out where you don't think that he's just going to sign somewhere else and be gone. And I think with the Cowboys hearing that, 
maybe they say, all right, we were going to offer four years, you know, 20 million. Mm -hmm. All right, you know, let's let's offer him just a little bit. Let's get this done, right? right. This guy exactly. is showing us some good faith. Exactly. He's making it clear he wants to be a cowboy. So let's get it done. Let's stop with all this. Let's get it done. Let's bring him back. Let's give him a little bit more than maybe we wanted if he had really, you know, put them to the, like, twisted yeah. them around. He's not doing that. And, yeah. the, and the Cowboys aren't doing it to him because right. you're not going to find a better running back in free agency. I mean, right. C.J. Spiller could not, I mean, nothing no. against him. No. He can't have that success. Mark Ingram would not have that success. DeMarco Murray is a difference maker that when he gets to the second level, all of a sudden a potential five-yard gain, the game becomes a 25, 30, 35 yard game. You can't, CJ Spill can do that, but it's more on the, on the perimeter, more on the outside. Instead of busting between the tackles, getting past that linebacker, now the state is like, oh Lord, here he comes again. But there's something you said about stability, too, when you're trying to win a championship. Keep as much of the core intact as possible. So from Dallas' standpoint and from DeMarco's standpoint, look, look, this is working. We've seen it progress from last year to the year before. It's getting there. Now we're in the conversation to possibly win a championship. Let's not break this up. We don't have to. And I think from both standpoints, it works out because here's the deal. Even if they sign it, how they structure a contract could be different. But let's say they give him a four-year deal, you know, where he gets so much guaranteed up front, but he can actually begin to opt out after two. Mm -hmm. How much more valuable would he be if he wins a ring? Oh, boy. You know what I'm saying? So oh he think they, they, that. So from his standpoint, also, look, if I get a ring on this finger, my value, boom goes up because every team at a certain point is going to look for a running back to solidify their offense that already has a ring if they're trying to get a ring. So, and, his, and not just on the market, but his, I mean, not just on the contract market, but his value goes through the roof in terms of within Dallas. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Exactly. What he's going to be able to get done there, what yeah. he's going to be able to do on the national level, like all of that may supplement what he might, that he might have gotten two million more over the life of a contract from like a Jacksonville or something like that. Dallas knows this model works. Yeah. It exactly. worked in the 90s. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Emmitt Smith, yeah. mm -hmm. Troy Aikman, yes, Michael he Irvin, big offensive line. Yeah. It's like somebody said, yeah. let's stop trying to make Tony Romo what he's not. Nothing against him because we saw the kind of season he had last year. But a big part of that was the fact that DeMarco Murray had over 1,800 yards rushing. If DeMarco really Murray did not have that kind of season, the Cowboys don't get into the playoffs because Tony Romo, especially now, he is not at that age where you can say, God then throw the ball around the park 40, 50 times and we're sure. going to win. Once in a while, yes, but not how they tried to do it and it didn't work all those years. And I'm pretty sure he was telling management, please don't let him go. Please right. don't let him go. I'm, I'm yeah. sure yeah, Romo was it, like, yeah, like, no, he's please. He's in Jerry Jones' ear exactly. saying, exactly. Let's bring exactly. back Des, bring, bring back DeMarco. Bring these guys back, yep. Keep um, these guys. Leave it there. When we come back, we're talking about Russell Westbrook. He's set to return tonight, less than a week after surgery. He'll look like Phantom of the Opera, according to you, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, have the mask on, so yes. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, you we'll will. see. He's going to wear it to the game. To the game. To the game. Westbrook returns. <laughs> that is the discussion on the other side of the park. Uh,